This is a new article, March 5th, on uh, Express UK by Sebastian Ketley, having, having to do with the new discovery concerning Yellowstone supervolcano, and it's shocking. The magma chamber, they say, has been revealed to have a network of magma under Yellowstone. They have conducted magma chamber scans, and the scans reveal a network of magma under Yellowstone. The magma chamber study has stunned Yellowstone scientists this week by dismantling previously accepted models of what hides under the supervolcano, a supervolcano like Yellowstone. This is what the United States Geological Survey, USGS, has revealed. Yellowstone volcano's magma the chamber likely resembles an intricate network of magma-filled tubes and tunnels deep beneath the ground, of course, and until recently, geologists studying supervolcano eruptions assumed the magma chamber resembled a vast cavern in the Earth's crust filled with molten rock. But the traditional magma chamber model was challenged this week by new geophysical Im imaging of the supervolcano system. This is what USGS says. Uh, that, of course, is the geological survey that's responsible for Yellowstone volcano monitoring. They even have an observatory there. And uh, they said that the study will have an impact on how future Yellowstone eruptions are predicted. Now, USGS said that uh, this is in its weekly edition of Caldera Chronicles. That comes out every week. Quote, what does a magma chamber look like? At first thought, many of us would imagine a large cavern in the crust filled with molten rock. While this has been the traditional model of a number of decades, geophysical imaging of regions below volcano systems have never found evidence for this style of magma storage. And they go on to say, as more data becomes available from geochemical and geophysical studies, our idea of what a magma chamber looks like has continued to evolve. By understanding what a magma chamber looks like prior to an eruption, we can start to understand how volcanic reservoirs are built and sustained over time. Now, the information uh, can help, of course, geologists better monitor and prepare and predict the eruptions. Supervolcano studies suggests volcanic magma is stored at a depth of many miles in a so-called mush zone, quote-unquote, a mush zone. This mush zone is a large semi-rigid region formed between 50% to 70% from crystals, but also as small amounts of molten rock. And under the new magma chamber model, these pockets of melt are distributed beneath the volcano and can be connected to one another or completely isolated. So these pockets of molten rock will likely merge over decades or centuries leading up to a major eruption and during a blast the pockets are tapped sequentially as the molten rock makes its way to the surface. And USGS said, quote, in other cases melt bodies may not fully merge at depth and instead could be erupted from multiple vents. This might explain why large bodies of melt have never been imaged, even though large eruptions have obviously occurred at places like Yellowstone. Now, they go on to say this knowledge has, it was, has uh, important implications for how we monitor volcanic systems, especially when interpreting geophysical data since it redefines what we might consider an active or eruptible magma reservoir. And in the case of Yellowstone, they say, the supervolcano, geologists have found the Huckleberry Ridge eruption, the biggest of Yellowstone's three major blasts, came from four separate melt pockets. The eruption, which went off 2.1 million years ago, spewed about 600 cubic miles of volcanic material. Thankfully, recent studies of Yellowstone Volcano's magma reservoir do not reveal any evidence of substantial melt pockets beneath the supervolcano. USGS said, quote, In fact, 
geophysical imaging shows that the mush zone consists of only about 5 to 15 percent, which indicates that a large eruption is not likely to happen any time soon. Now, Yellowstone Volcano is believed to have had three major caldera-forming eruptions over the last two million years. These three superblasts each occurred about 640,000 years ago, 1.2 million years ago, and 2.1 million years ago. USGS scientists have their Yellowstone Observatory there, and they monitor the supervolcano for signs of any activity. And they've extrapolated from these three blasts on an average of 740,000 year interval in between eruptions. This means Yellowstone might have another super eruption at some point in the next 100,000 or 140,000 years. And U.S. geologist Wendy Stovall said, you cannot get statistically accurate if you look at only two intervals. And the way that it works is that this volcano field has cycles that it goes through. It erupts and it erupts rhyolite lava flows and then it will erupt in a super eruption and then more rhyolite lava flows will come in and fill in the caldera so the super eruption will form a caldera, she said. So this is the latest, it's just now in March 5th. Um, thank you for uh, supporting me, thank you for viewing my views, thank you for uh, now please know though that a lot of these, the things that I uh, put here, um, I try and make as uh, fresh as possible. And other uh, articles which may be a little bit older, for example two of them that I found just today on Yellowstone, the one that said that Yellowstone is two and a half times bigger than what they thought it was, and in fact that the Yellowstone magma and uh, supervolcano reaches all the way down, for example, to Mexico. Uh, that was an old article from 2013, I think. But I thought that was very important to put in there because that's very specific, very huge, because of the fact that we see quake swarms in Colorado, in southern Utah, and Montana, uh, which are pretty far away from Yellowstone, and yet we see that the quakes happen at the same time that they happen in Yellowstone. So it's not a coincidence. It means that they're connected somehow. Uh, and I, I we, we were asking ourselves this, and Ben Ferriula was asking this, was asking himself this in one of his videos. I'm going to I'm going to let him know um, that the scientists say that the Yellowstone reaches all the way down to Mexico. So of course Colorado is connected to somehow in some way with Yellowstone. So yeah, it is important to see some of the older articles as well because I had missed that one and that answered our question concerning the Colorado quakes recently. And uh, nobody even knew that Colorado has any measurable volcanoes. And it does, it had a super volcano at the Great Sand Dunes. That was a huge lake. Uh, so everything ties into each other. Every day we learn something new, so that's just great. So, and also please know that in my uh, Patreon uh, uh, channel, there are things there that are not on here at all. Uh, and one of the things I found out today, and I will do an Antarctica video next, has to do with the importance of obtaining access to Antarctica. Why do they need to get to Antarctica? And uh, that was one of the things that was said in uh, the, uh, one of my Venezuela coup videos, which I don't have here at all. It's on the Patreon uh, channel. And uh, uh, they uh, will implement the Monroe Doctrine in that Latin America is the backyard of the United States. And they will implement the Monroe Doctrine. And they said they must have Latin America in order to have access to Antarctica. So that's what I learned today. So thank you for your support. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse 
and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.